in this country, I am known to speak the truth. And you know many people have a problem with the truth. Many people. And this new Kenya, we are trying to get everybody to accept the truth as it is. Uh, the unprovoked and unwarranted attack on the U.S. ambassador to Kenya, Meg Whitman, is as a result of people being allergic to the truth and the reality. <laughs> ambassador Meg Whitman and other ambassadors were at bombers throughout the counting of votes. They had access to the public portal. They had calculators. They are educated. And they have done some bit of mathematics. They added the numbers. They observed. And they were clear that the election was won fair and square. And it was open, democratic, and meets the best international standards. What the ambassador is saying is that is the truth. So she is being attacked and vilified by saying what everybody knows. I want to request leaders to accept the truth and the reality and move on. Life is not static. Life is dynamic. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down, and so on. Again, I want to request our leaders to exercise patriotism to their motherland. President William Ruto inherited a difficult situation I said in Kasarani on the inauguration day on the 13th of September last year, and some people thought I'm mischievous, and they thought probably I'm mannerless to say the truth in front of visitors. And I said the kind of economy we had inherited, and the coffers were empty, and in our stores even rats had disappeared because there was nothing to eat. And the president has embarked on a very difficult journey of the economic transformation of this great republic. Along the way, we have found good friends. Ambassador Meg Whitman, in a record time, has increased the volume of trade between Kenya and the United States, that as I speak today, the United States of America is Kenya's largest trading partner in the world. She has taken time to sit with the president, to sit with me, to sit with our cabinet ministers, to unlock business opportunities and to bring investors from America. What she deserves is commendation, not verification for being truthful. I want to urge Ambassador Meg to ignore the noises and acclimatized to the Kenyan way of doing things, perennial complaints year after year. She should stay focused and go on with her work. I want to say that we need also to be respectful to our development partners. You cannot speak in a public forum before national television and say that you have the capacity to recall an ambassador from the United States accredited to this country by the American government. It's simply being mischievous. As a private citizen, how would you recall an ambassador? You cannot even transfer an assistant chief in your local subluxation. You know, it's part of the, the denial syndrome. You know, you know what was happening during the hardship regime? It's something that happened, that happened that nobody can comprehend. That cabinet ministers were being told to go and brief a private citizen on what is happening in government. Principal secretaries were being told to go and brief a private citizen on the workings of government. The CS National Treasury was being told to go and brief a private citizen about the budget. That is why that private citizen thinks he can recall the American ambassador to go back to the country. That situation is over. We have a government in place. Please just take up your rightful role and oversight government because 
That is your role. Again, I want to say that the hardship team, after destroying the economy of this country, gave President Ruto no chance because they knew it was almost impossible to turn around the country. In a record one year, President William Ruto, through pragmatic leadership, continuous engagement, agreeing to be advised, having a very competent, competent economic